Good morning. Oh, what a beautiful day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to open up with one of the old familiar hymns of the church, Down at the Cross, where my Savior is down. Down where for cleansing, from sin I abide. There to my heart was the blood of flowers. Glory to his name. Down at the Cross, where my Savior died. Right. 
us pray. Uh, dear Lord, our God, the maker and the creator of every good and of every perfect gift. Here it is again, dear Lord, that we, your people, have come together, gathered in your name to tell you thank you. We come this morning for no show, no fun, no fashion. But we come that we might lift up the name of Jesus. Simply because you're worthy to be praised. We come this morning to thank you before we ask you of anything. For blessing us to see another day. After watching over us all night long. And camping your angels around us. For our security during the night. As we slumbered and slept in an unconscious state. All night long. And then early this morning, yeah. Yeah. before the dew dropped on the center blade of grass, early this morning, yeah. with the divine finger of love, you touched us. Our eyes came open, and we were able to behold and see a brand new day. And for that, we're grateful. And then, Lord, we, we realized this morning that it could have been either one of us. Either one of us. That just slept right out of time into eternity. But you spared us one more day. Not only did you wake us up this morning, but you got us up. And we're yet clothed in our right mind. And we yet have a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. You gave us homes in which to live. You gave us finances in which to pay our little bills with. And then you blessed us, dear Lord, with food more than enough. In our cabinets, in our cupboards, we come to say thank you. Realizing that you didn't have to do it, but we're so glad that you did. And now, Lord, you, you led us to the house of worship where we can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lift up your name and give you the praise for all that you've done for us and how good you've been to us. We want to thank you, good Lord, that it was us this morning that's in a hospital room. Lying on our deathbed, hooked up to dinner and Lord Jesus, apparatus is to help us to breathe. But Lord, you breathe fresh air, fresh air into us this morning, and we come to say thank you. Lord, when we got to the house of worship, we looked around and saw a family. We saw our friends and loved ones. Still in the land of the God, all our way to say, all that we say thank you. We can't thank you a lot for looking beyond every thought and supplying every one of our needs. All we not deserve. We have not been so good. We have not been so kind. We have not kept our commandment so well. But we're so glad this morning that you looked beyond our thoughts and saw our needs. And we thank you. Now bless this day. Bless this hour. Bless these, your people. Let us unify and glorify as well as magnify your holy name because you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. To be praised. For this is our prayer in the blessed name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we pray with thanksgiving. Thank God. Amen. I'm glad be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. Yeah. 
Christ is. After he asked that question, outspoken Peter then said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus turned to him and said, And blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And my sisters and brothers, Jesus then said, And upon this rock, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We know that there are there's hurricanes and the storms that have been all around America, and Hurricane Ida has wreaked her havoc. The storm caused destruction in churches and in areas like Louisiana and Mississippi and Pennsylvania and Maryland and Virginia and New Jersey and New York. Destroy buildings and destroy church buildings. But I've stopped by to tell you this morning, we serve a living God, a living God, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Even with COVID-19 in the land, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I decided a long time ago to follow Jesus, hallelujah, cross before me, world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Is there under the sound of my voice that you came into the house of worship one more time to lift up the name of Jesus. I wish I could get a witness in the house today. Why don't you put your blessed hands together and give God some praise. Put some hands on it, church. Put some hands on it. Hallelujah. 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 We praise God for everyone that is in the sanctuary and those of you that are joining us by way of a virtual sanctuary. I'm Dr. Charles Hemphill, and on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Willie Jacobs Jr. and his lovely wife, Sister Minnie Jacobs, and the entire True Love Missionary Baptist Church family, welcome to the True Love Experience. Now let us receive our praise team. Hallelujah.
in your lives. Hallelujah.
glory. We would like to, we actually, let's start thanking the Holy Spirit for his presence. Thank the Holy Spirit for his presence this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for showing up in this house, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your glory. Yes. And we would like to welcome our visitors. If we have any visitors in the house, in our physical sanctuary, if you would just stand right where you are to be recognized. Amen, amen, amen. Please remain standing and one of our ushers will greet you. And we thank you for joining us. Do we have any visitors in our virtual sanctuary out there? If you are visiting us for the first time virtually, enter your name in the chat where you're visiting us from. If you already belong to a church, enter into your church name. We are welcome to welcome all of you and be so glad that you decided to dial in or stop by True Love Missionary Baptist Church this morning. We know that you could have went anywhere or logged on to any page, but we're so grateful that you chose us this morning. And so we greet you on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Willie Dr. Jacobs Jr. and Sister Minnie. Amen? Amen. Can we give him a, a air hug? Air hug. Air, oh, he taking it. He receiving it. Amen. 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 COVID to change all kind of things, but but that's all right. He can't stop our praise. Amen. Amen. Now it is time for our tithes and our offerings. Um, if you have not had an opportunity to place your tithes and offering this morning within our physical sanctuary, please raise your hand and Usher will provide you with an envelope. Yes, we have some hands raised. Provide you with an envelope and you can deposit your offering in our tithes and offering box upon exiting the sanctuary after service this morning. If you are joining us virtually, there are four ways in which you can give. You can give by accessing our website at www.truelovemdclv.com. Click the Give tab. You can select Givelify or PayPal. There's a couple options in which you can do so. Provide your offering and click Submit, and you've given your worship service of the Lord and giving today. You can also download the Givelify app. Search for True Love Missionary Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada and give according to your heart's desire. You may also mail in your offering at 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. Amen, amen, amen. It's a blessing to be able to give. It's a blessing to be able to worship through our giving. Amen, amen. And as we bless our offering, because it's only because of the grace of God that we're able to, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you, God. We thank you first and foremost for your presence today, God. God, we know that without you, we would not be, God. We know that without you, God, we would, could not make it another minute, another day, another second, God. So we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this offering, Father God, not because you needed it, God, because you can do all things with or without us, God, but we thank you for the opportunity to worship you through our giving, Lord God. We thank you for the blessings that you provided us over and over and over and over again, Father God, and all you ask for is a reasonable portion, God, and so we thank you for the reasonable portion that has been placed at your feet this morning, God. We ask that you use it for the edification of your kingdom, God, so that your kingdom work can continue to go forward, God. God, we thank you, we love you, and we pray all these things in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Can we give God another hand praise? Amen. Y'all know that you have never seen this Sunday before, right? It's a blessing to be here. Glory to God. Um, we will have another song by our worship team, and after that you will have a word that has been delivered by the shepherd of this house, by our Reverend Dr. Willie Jacobs Jr. He needs no introduction. You know him. We love him, and we just pray that God pours into him and replenishes him fully once he's done. Amen. Come on, clap your hands if you know the
that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their own voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now we all should be saying the thing, Lord, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, I want you to look. He only gave them six words. Look at it. Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were what? Plans. Because they were willing to listen to what? The word. And when one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, glorify God. That's why you come to church on Sunday. Am I saying something? And look what he did. And he fell down on his face at his feet. It, it wasn't the priest's feet. It was Jesus' feet. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered saying, were there not ten? But where are the nine? Now we ought to be that one. They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And now last and final verse. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I want you to look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. The word today is faith power. I want you to listen to that. Life at its best brings things in situations that beat our mind and, and wear down our will to go on. Things come from many directions, causing great distraction and disturb the wonderful plans of peace. Time, life can become a shadow. We become pressed all around and feel there's no hope. Here we see 10 men in sickness, having pain and suffering and feeling there was no hope, help, or solution. Yeah. Having a life living in heaven. Having families and friends who may be close around but distance and isolated from the disease because by culture and law, they had to be quarantined or separated from everybody else. Their diseases was as such to cause them to be rejected. The 10 were together, living with those who shared the same disease, pain and having and sharing in the same loneliness and despair living and breathing, yet the fullness, happiness, and contentment in life had vanished. They were living together, but yet they were living alone. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we can see and understand in the text the situation these men lived in. We see the same people who walked the streets in front of this church who desperate need to meet Jesus and have their life transformed. They are living and breathing, but living hopeless lives with no sense of knowing Jesus can change their life and their future and their situation. One can be locked in and bought in that life can never change, nor can their situation or circumstances even change. Now you listen to me. Ten lepers in a company. Uh, are you listening? A colony. Now we are called that where they live in in, in a situation of they lived in a place where they had died. Society made them an outcast. And many times, brothers and sisters, we got to be careful because we make those on the outside an outcast because we're not willing to share Jesus with them. Are you with me? So, so, so society can walk the minds of people. January the 6th is a prime time example of how a nut went loose and, and the squirrels ate the nuts. 
I'm listening to it. Wait, wait. A culture, a culture, a culture had hidden their face from them. No hope or cure was in that culture. They had left them, walked away for the fear of the disease. No one looked or had an interest, nor did they care about these ten lepers. Their lives would live a dying death. Dying a slow and sure death. Holding on to live without hope. Living in pain and suffering, death. Life can bring loneliness and the lowest feeling in one suffering in life. Are you listening to me? And take away any hope of going on and leave one without real purpose in life and see life as just a part of living but nothing more. Living with abandonment and knowing one can, can't help you. A one may be able to help you, but his name is Jesus. The culture and religion had closed the door. And the sign they put on the door, off living. Are you listening? Don't come around, don't want to be bothered with you, so don't show up. Because we're not going to let you in. When one can help, when one can help, when one's greatest hope become shattered when lives on the borders of death. Oh, yeah. When uncertain disappointment is playing on your last nerve, pain and suffering become a companion. Are you listening to me? When life brings storm trials and it seems there is no end to your pain and suffering. When trying and putting your best foot forward, yet you come up short. Out of all your trying, mishaps and shortfalls seem to be your personal pursuit and an illusion. Just going through the motion and nothing is happening in your life. Right. You're just facing the worst in life. That's pain and right. suffering as if the why was I born? Right. To suffer like this. Today, listen, today and right now, it ain't over until God says it's over. Right. When Jesus show up, life is never the same. The text said Jesus shows up at a certain village in verse 12, and things get better when Jesus shows up. Tired, but Jesus show up. You can come to church. We don't care, brother. You can come to church tired because Jesus will show up. Are you listening? Is anything too hard for God? Ten leopards still to fall off because they realized they weren't worthy to come in Jesus' presence. Are you listening? Those that come to Jesus know he is holy, stand and draw far off. The text in verse 13, verse 13 says it was at a distance and they cried, Jesus, have mercy on us. The ten leopards listen. We serve a merciful God. Amen. We can call on him anytime. We need mercy. And we all agree that we need his grace and his mercy. They understood the suffering of each. He, Jesus understood the suffering of each one of them. And he understands the suffering of us. Jesus can give us mercy. He is a merciful God. He understands the pain and the suffering that we are going through. And what we face in life. They knew in their reasoning and they never asked for healing or cleansing, or kill. They only ask for mercy. Mercy. Jesus, we ask and we seek only mercy. We only seek compassion and mercy. Just the relief from this pain and suffering and lingering death. We only seek mercy. He, we heard we, we, we heard about you, about your wondrous work and how great and how marvelous you are, Jesus. We only want some mercy. We know that there's nobody like you. Leprosy was called by God this pleasure by the sin, and only God could remove it. Are you listening to me? Nobody can speak a word and calm an angry water, an angry sea. Nobody like you. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody can turn life around but you. The text says in verse 14, when Jesus saw the ten lepers, 
with no prayer, no, prayer. no conversation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No come to Jesus. He didn't say nothing. He just uh, told them to go show yourself to the priest. One man spoke six words and their life changed. Yeah. Go show yourself to the priest. Right. Oh, did. Jesus went, was, went to the point that Tim never, never questioned Christ. What's going on? Why do we? They never reason within their mind. Why should we go? Nothing is changing in our life. They started to go to the priest. They knew the duties of the priest. They started to walk in, even though there was they were not cleansed. Nobody but the Lord. They decide for the church that they were willing to put Christ's word to the test. What about you? Do you put him to the test? They were willing to go on as a team and check the truth of Christ's word. Are you listening to me? How many are willing to move and trust God every word without doubt or complaint? How many will stand on his word when you lost someone close to your heart? Maybe a spouse, or someone that you truly, a good friend, you've lost them. Can you still trust his word? Are you with me? Their hearts were fixed. And they believed in Jesus and took his word knowing their lives was a living hell and none could give hope but Jesus. How do you go on? How do you face it when those uns? You know, those circumstances, those issues and situations are facing you that you can't do nothing about. And nobody can help you but Jesus. Jesus, listen, Jesus' few words to a disgraceful, rejected man. Jesus' few words and their faith propelled them into a life. Now life becomes more real. Cleansed, now they put on new skin and a thirst in life that was refreshing to their soul. How do we handle, listen, comebacks, setbacks, putback, maybe layoff? How do we handle those things? Can we go on and say, yes, Lord? What would you say in this condition? Need a sign? I don't know. I need some assurance. Jesus don't come to inform, but to transform. He didn't come uh, to make you a winner. He came because you were a sinner and lost. This level saw Jesus as a big God who did big things. That's why D.L. Moody said, if your God is big, you ought to make big plans. Are right. you listening to me? A religious, listen, listen, listen. A religious, a religious system yeah. had discounted and put them away in a place where a covering of death was their reward. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Oh, yeah. we, should, listen, we, we should be willing to walk in the word without question. Yeah. Christ tested the ten leopards and they was obedient and faithful to his word. Yeah. What about us? Yeah. What about the church? Yeah. What about so-called believers? Yeah. What about us? Christ give favor to those who trust him. In verse 14, B, as they went, they were cleansed. Nobody but Jesus. Look at your neighbor. and said, nobody can do it like Jesus. The priest would check them and see if they were clean. They would get a certificate that, that they were clean. Christ is in a position to do great things in our lives when we surrender total and wholehearted without exception. In verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. See, Jesus have a health care plan. He covered pre existence. Are you listening to me? He covered the least of loss and the left out. He covered the dying and the almost dead and the dead. That's Lazarus. He covers all and gives us hope. And he gives us the best of himself. 
His covers plan are physical and spiritual. Anybody who's grateful and thankful can receive his plan. And one thing about God, he just don't give liability. He give full coverage. Yes. So I'm going along and receive a blessing. But they're not faithful to the Lord. Some may think they own the blessing. They deserve to be blessed by the Lord. Are you listening? Bad to take God's blessing and appear unappreciative. Turn back to the author of the blessing. He did not need to be reminded this one. He knew who had, who had the power and who had changed his life. He knew it was nobody. Somebody talk to me. Nobody but, but Jesus. He knew it was Dr. Jesus. The medicine man. As the old lady would say, he had more medicine in the hymn. The medicine man. He knew who had set him free. Are you listening? Turn back with a loud voice. Some folks want to be go quiet. Like the Lord ain't never done nothing for him. But let me tell you, he done everything. Nobody had to ask him to pray Jesus. We need to stop pumping folks up. Maybe we ought to push some we we'll like it a while, so we can push a while in the pool pit to fire somebody up. Make a move. Some say don't take all of that. Don't get carried away. Well, you never know. And you don't know what folks going through. You don't know what they've been dealing with. We should be thankful and grateful. If you can't say amen and thank you. And what God has done to you and what he may do are you listening to me we are the shout on praise we are the shout listen we, we, we are the shout on credit for what God already done for us are you listening to me you never lived you probably never lived in deep pain poison and none can touch you you, you, you never lived as an outcast Living in suffering and broken spirit, you never live as a nobody. Everybody has given up on you. You never live without hope. We we have we, we have some lepers around us right now. Are you listening to me? They'll always be around. Uh, see, you probably never wrestled in suffering and, 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 and never, ne 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 never had to be distant from folks. Yeah. Lepers walk in front of this church every day yeah. on our streets. Yeah. Go down on Owens. There's lepers there yeah. that's suffering from the pit of sin, yeah. from sin pain. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you've never been, you, you, you've probably never been in a situation like this. Never had nothing to disturb you, your, 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 your life or, 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 or cause you to, to go down on your knees and pray, God, help me. Notice he, the Samaritan, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified. He magnified and praised God. Those who receive mercy from God don't mind expressing their thankfulness and their gratitude. They don't mind lifting it up and saying, thank you, Lord. God, I know you've been good to me. Lord, I know you blessed me. Knowing it was nobody but Jesus. His experience in cleansing caused him to glorify God. Praise by himself. Nobody else want to praise him. You praise him for what he's done for you. You praise him. Open up this morning. You praise him for what he's done for you. You praise him because he's worthy. His heart was wrapped up in thankfulness. So he couldn't stop praising the Lord. 
If you've been down, but God brought you through, you ought to praise him and say, thank you, Lord. Give him a high five. I love you, Lord. But what you already done. In verse 17, he fell down at the feet. He was a Samaritan. He placed himself in the most humble position, giving thanks, denying himself and thanking the Lord for what he'd done for him. And we, you know what? We should, shouldn't be so proud that we just can't think. A Samaritan, an outcast. Jesus saw them. Listen, the Jews saw them as dogs, unclean dogs. And a dog was something that, you know, today we kind of hug up to them and kiss them and we, we kind of deal with them. But, 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 but dogs was unclean. Like, I mean, listen to me. In, in fact, the Samaritan, uh, if, 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 if a Samaritan walked across one of their fields, the Jews would burn it. That's what they thought about them. Even though they was half breed and half of their brothers. Hey, I can listen to me. A Samaritan of people who did not have God's word. Not that they have a relationship with God. He understood his condition was critical and hopeless. Everybody had, had, had left him to die in the company of his kind. Yeah. Are you listening? So, society had labeled him unfit and unclean, but Christ gave him new life. Yeah. And he's still giving us new life. Those who yeah. to believe in him and trust him and follow him. Yeah. Are you listening to him? Yeah. You ought to feel like going on. In verse 17, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus said, uh, uh, where, where are them ten of them? You had, it was ten of them. But where are the nine? Ungrateful. Not thankful. Not appreciative. They just took the blessing and, and took a walk. The nine were Jews. They got the blessing, been cleansed, and that was just enough for them. Oh, but the Samaritans, his blessing and cleansing was more than enough. He was desperate. He was willing to thank God for what he'd done for him. Are you listening to me? His world was upside down and the disease has called life giving hell in his, in his life. But he saw the value of being cleansed and those who've been blessed uh, have a greater uh, understanding and thankfulness of the one that, that did it for him. And that was Jesus. He knew Christ had blessed him and had made a way. Have you made a way for you? Yes. He have you blessed you? He's always blessing us and, 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 and doing great things in our lives. Are you listening? Listen, Jesus gave him a new skin. Maybe that's why mama said I looked at my hand. Hand just me. Looked at these old worn out, you know, feet and they, they did too. And, and, and Jesus give us a new skin, a new, a new life, and, and, and what Jesus gave them was better than they had before. A better life than, than before, for he, for, he, for he experienced the power of Jesus. He received the great mercy of Jesus and the great compassion of Jesus. His heart was full of thankfulness, so he gave God the glory and he gave him the praise. This is free. Faith that marches on in trial storms and heartbroken experience is, can only come from the Lord. Yeah. Can only be a part, should be a part of our life. Yeah. Listen, these ten lepers experience a personal blessing and a real miracle from Jesus. But watch this. We as believers know more about Jesus than the ten lepers. Yeah. Are you listening? We should be of a greater interest and value to trust him and, and live a life that's trusting, knowing God is real and faithful and he will follow through on his word and his promise. Nobody should have to push us and prep us up and, 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 and try to pimp us and, and say amen and thank you. Because, look, we got a book and we know more about Jesus than anybody. You know, we ought to know more about Jesus and understand who he is and be able to follow him and trust him with our life. Because we got a book called the Bible. We got a book that we got, that we got the testament. We, the book is a, it stands as a witness. And it's a testimony to us what God can do for us and through us. We ought to be grateful and thankful that, that we can have a greater and a better relationship. We don't have to be beat. We don't have to beat ourselves and, and victimize ourselves through trials and storms. Jesus promised, he said, Lord, I'm with you. And that haven't changed. 
and great is he that is in me. And we got the overcomer on the inside. The very power of God lives in us. We don't have to suffocate ourselves with weight of the world, for he has the whole world in his hand. We don't have to be buried before we die with things we can't handle or things we can do nothing about. All we got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? One man, his heart cherished a rich and a wholesome blessing. The nine, in verse 18, Christ said, never return to give God thanks. I've, I have gone to the hospital and I've prayed for some and God and, 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 and God blessed them to come out and them Negroes never turn around and say thank you. Are oh, you listening to me? If you've done anything for you, you ought to be have sense enough to say thank you. And I know he's still living. It has been about 15 years. God still holding, still holding him, hold, hold, holding him up. Are you listening? Unbreaking. Take God's goodness and wonderful blessing and don't even say thank you. What, what heart is so, listen, satisfied with this new life yet you don't honor and, and fail to be thankful? We all need to look back and give thanks for all God has, has brought us to. Jesus said to the one in verse 19, let me let it close. Arise, go thy way, thy faith have made me whole. Yeah, Jesus spoke a word to him. Jesus tell the Samaritan go, your faith have made you whole. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? That faith has power. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. faith touches God's heart. Yeah, yeah. Pure faith. Yeah. Honest faith. Yeah. Your faith has made you well. The nine was cleansed. Cleansed out of God's mercy and yeah. compassion. Yeah. God is still working that way. He's still healing. He's still blessing out of mercy and compassion. God give mercy and compassion even to those who won't even say thank you. Let me say it again. God gives mercy and compassion even to those who won't even say thank you. God showed himself to be merciful and compassionate. He looked beyond people's mind, behavior, and practice, and show them compassion. Are you listening to me? God is a man that's good to do business with. All of us know someone who promised they'll do better and follow the Lord if God would bless and heal them. But, somebody said, but. I'm going to leave that but alone. Down down on their luck, as they say. Let me tell you what luck is. Luck is something that, keep, that catch God by surprise. There ain't no such thing as luck. Are you listening? Got the job, got the promotion, got the money, and lost it all. But they forgot to keep their promise and say thank you all. A promise to be faithful to the church and blessing. But it canceled their promise. Because they made a commitment to themselves. It's sad. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, you can do anything you want. Yeah. But you got to remember, the earth is the Lord. Yeah. Everything you got on. Even, even the moon glad rag you wear, you belong to him. Yeah. Are you listening to me? The earth is the Lord. Everything belongs to him. Yeah. Amen. And we ought to be thankful for who he is. He is our all in all. He is our everything. The thief on the cross. Oh, he got a mind change. And he changed his mind. Amen. In the midst of time. He was going to die. But guess what? He died in the Lord. It's never too late, brothers and sisters. I'm, open, I'm extending an invitation to discipleship. Don't get so caught up, you're not going to say thank you. The Bible said there's only one name. I said one name. One name. One man. And his name is Jesus. I think these ten lepers understood something. Even though one was saved by faith, made him well, the others was by mercy and compassion. They all got the same blessing, but one was more grateful. And you see, when you're grateful, you don't mind giving the praise. You know, like, 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 you, you don't be faithful, God doesn't pay. Just, and, and change your life. That you're on your way to heaven anyway. 
Amen. We ought, we, ought to, we, we ought to be grateful for who he is and what he's done in our lives. Amen. We, we got a good God. A compassionate God. And we see it in the text where they, were, they, they didn't, they wouldn't even say thank you. Don't you think Jesus didn't know that they was going to walk away? Don't you think he even knew they wasn't going to say thanks? He knew all that, but he blessed him anyway. Sometimes God blesses us in spite of our behavior and our actions and how we even treat him and how we even treat each other. God still blesses us. Why? Because he's God. And he's totally different than us. Amen. He, he don't bless you on your, because you deserve a blessing. He blesses you because he wants to bless you. Amen. He got a right to do what he wants. And he does. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Amen. But you got to come to him. Amen. I don't care if you're dipping snuff, smoking, drinking, don't do it, but it doesn't matter. Okay. You, know, you could have been out last night, but guess what? You can come in today. Amen. Just add you up. Amen. Amen. One thing about him, he don't discriminate. It's not about color, it's about the heart. Amen. It is not about what you look like or what, you, what you're wearing. It's about the heart. God is looking for, for people who's willing to serve him and be faithful and committed and dedicated to him. This one, this Samaritan, proved that God is real. And I know he's real. We, are, we, we ought to come to church, shout. On our way to church, we ought to be smiling and happy and say, thank you, Lord. You allow me one more day to go in your presence and pray with like-minded folks that are willing to give you the praise and honor. It's all about Jesus. Always was and always will. Amen. He's a God of yesterday, today, and what? Tomorrow and forever. We can praise him for who he is. We ought to thank him. Don't be ashamed. He said, if you don't honor me before men, I will not honor you before my father. He said, you got to pay up first. You got to do it first before I do it for you. Amen. It's all about Jesus. It ain't about you and it ain't about me. It's about Christ. We need to put on the whole armor, put him on take off ourselves and take off our thinking and our reasoning. Amen. We all love each other more and more. Regardless of what folk done to you. Amen. You do more to yourself than what other folks have done to you. You ought to be able to say thank you, Lord. And you ought to say thank you. And be grateful and be honest when you see other folks blessed. Are you with me? This thief saw something in Jesus he never saw in anybody else. He saw Jesus as a deliverer. He saw Jesus as a savior. He saw Jesus as his only hope. And guess what? It's still the same way. Our only hope is Jesus. And he was willing to take the road and the path to receiving Christ. It's still the same. It haven't changed. You got to come to Jesus. Come. Thank you. You may be seated. opportunity to grab and behold 
by the stripes that you bore, by the crown of thorns on your head that you took for us, God. And so we come before your table, Heavenly Father, God, as humbly as we know how, thanking you for paying the cost for us, Lord God, the cost of our sins, God. You were sinless, but you took it all because of us, God. You took it all because you loved us just that much, God. God, and we thank you. So we come to you today, God, first cleansing our heart of anything that's preventing us from accepting the fullness of who you are, God. We come to your table lightly, God. We take this as an opportunity to celebrate the life that you have given us, God. We take this as an opportunity to glorify you, Father God, to not leave here today, God, after we've uh, succumbed to communion, God, not changed. God, we thank you today, God. We thank you and we bless you, God, and we bless you. Your name, Heavenly Father God. And we ask that you continue to just pour and pour into us, God, so that we can be more and more like you, God. More and more like you, God. It's all about you, Heavenly Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Let's all stand and Yes, we will be scripture. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take. Eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. After the supper, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us now drink together. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew forth the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so eat him eat of that which of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I 
membership has already been extended, but we'd like to make sure that our virtual sanctuary understand that you too are invited to join the family of Jesus Christ. That is the best decision that you can ever make in your life. We can plan for so much in life, but choosing Jesus is the best choice that you can make. And so if you're in our virtual sanctuary, text I believe to 55469 and one of our ministry leaders will connect with you. Or if you're looking for a church home, welcome home. Welcome to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, a loving church, a loving church. And we invite you in to be a part of our family. Again, text I believe to 55469. Amen. Amen. And if any of you may, up, oh, yes. Oh, praise God. All right. Glory. Y'all know the devil mad, right? Yes. So someone will be with you to gather your information, and we invite you. Are you joining on your Christian experience or baptism? Or? <laughs> baptism. Praise God. Come on, let's can we give God some praise this morning. Amen, amen. I don't care what the world looks like, God is still moving. God is still in control. He is still moving. He is still moving. He is still moving. Um, though some of you may have joined late or dialed in to our virtual service late. Um, if so, you still have an opportunity to give as well. Um, and there's four ways in which you can do so. You can log on to our website at www.truelovembc.com and select the giving tab or the PayPal tab. Or you can download the Givelify app, select True Love Missionary Baptist Church, and submit your offering. You can also mail it in at 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. And we do have a few announcements. Just a reminder that Sunday morning worship Check-in and screening begins at 10.15 a.m. Our deacon's devotional service, you do not want to miss, begins at 10.45 a.m. Our in-person and virtual service begins at 11 a.m. And we ask for all in-person worshipers to please keep your mask on as we continue to praise God, knowing that we still have the virus that is rampant in our world today. All church announcements to be shared on Sunday mornings must be submitted on Thursdays. By 5 p.m., announcements can be left on the church voicemail at 702-648-3603. Don't miss two of the most life-changing hours of prayer every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. and Friday night live at 7 p.m. Come on, Mother Jordan. Come. Yes, there she is over there. She, she. Y'all gotta join Mother Johnson, Mother, Mother J Jordan. Yes, and everybody else that dials in. It's an hour you don't want to miss. Um, our True Love prayer line is 848-777-1500. The conference ID is 648-3603-POUND. You don't want to miss it. We are still taking orders for our Straight Out of True Love t-shirts. And so if you would like to place your order today, please see me immediately after service to place your order. Also, we know that COVID-19 and the Delta variant is real. And there is now an FDA approved vaccine that can prevent or minimize the effects of this deadly virus. If you have not been vaccinated or know someone who has not, join us on September 25th from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. here at True Love. There will be a COVID-19 pop-up vaccine clinic sponsored by Immunize, Immunize Nevada in partnership with True Love Community Development Incorporated. For more information, you can see Brandy Brown or you can send an email to info at tlcdi.org. Attention all youth in grades 6 through 12. The True Love Community Development Incorporated invites you to be a part of the 2021-2022 mentorship program where you can meet other young people, have fun while being empowered and motivated to be your best self. For more details, see Orlando Riley or send email requesting information to info at tlc.org. If you are a high school senior, 
You don't want to miss the 22nd annual You Can HBCU Recruitment Fair. This is in partnership with the Office of Clark County Commissioner William McCurdy, September 25th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is a virtual event. There will be over 35 HBCUs represented, and you will have an opportunity for on-the-spot admission, scholarships, that's money, that's money, and fee waivers. If you are interested, you need to register at you can go to college, all one word, you can go to college.org. So if you're listening, you don't want to miss this. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And so we're re reminding all men to please get your prostate screening done. It saves lives. If you want to stay tuned of all the happenings with True Love Missionary Baptist Church, you can visit our website at www.truelovenbclv.com and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, the band app, and also on text alerts. There's no reason that you don't know what's going on in your church. Amen? All right. And then we also would like to once again welcome Charles, Charlie, Charlie Anderson for baptism. Amen. 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 Our thought for the week. Forgiveness is unlocking the door to set someone free and realizing that you were the prisoner. Mark 11, 25. Thank you for joining us today. We thank you and we pray that you have a blessed week and I will return you over into the hands of our pastor, Reverend Willie Dr. Jacobs Jr. Amen. Thanks, Sister Angie. Those of you who haven't had your COVID-19 or Delta, you need to get vaccinated. Now, don't you think that because you, if you're young, my grandson, 17 years old, going to Canyon, he got it out there in the school. Amen? Don't be listening to these, these fruits running around here. Go get vaccinated. Are you listening to me? Get vaccinated. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago, I spoke with one person or two of them. I'm not gonna get vaccinated. And guess what? They they had COVID. They got COVID before that. You know, hey, protect yourself. We've been getting shots all our life. Your kids, your children, your children, your children cannot go to school until they get all the shots. When I went in the military, they'd be shooting in both arms. Amen. Because it's for your good, it's for your health to keep you, you know, to keep you up, you know, keep you alive. Amen. Amen. We, me and my wife, we take our shots. And I take it not because I'm old, I, I keep it, I take it because I, I want good health. Amen. 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 We thank all of you, all you deacons, and thank you all. Like I said, South Carolina, I think all of y'all. That's it, right? Okay. Y'all ready to go home? Ready to just all stand? God.